great privilege to be in his presence. Are you here? Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. I was reading something from Exodus 33, the verse number 14. That's not my cardinal message, my cardinal scripture, but I was gleaning through scriptures and uh, give it to me. Exodus 33 and the verse 14. Exodus 33, verse 14. MCR, can you help me? Project it for me. Exodus 33, the verse number 14. Exodus 33, verse 14. Exodus chapter 33. Okay, let me see if I can get it here. Yeah. I see, this was God talking to Moses. Now, prior to this, Israel had done some illicit things, contravening God's decree. So, God had told them in the verse, in the chapter 13, that I'm never going to go with you. I'm sending you an angel to go with you. Then within 24 hours, God decided to change his mind. Let me digress and say, God will change his mind over some things on your lives. Amen. And he said, my presence now will go with you. And I will give you rest. Suddenly dawn on me why we need the presence of God on our lives desperately. Because when the presence is on us, the first thing we have is rest. And this year, because we have spent some time praying and seeking him, his presence will come on us and his presence will give us rest. We are not clapping. You wouldn't understand the depths of God's rest on your life until you become emotionally stabilized. Then you can understand what it means to have rest in God. But move it to verse 15, the verse number 15, the verse 15. And he said, my presence will go with you. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Move it, verse 16. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? So the presence of God brings grace upon our lives. So the presence, number one, brings rest. Number two, it brings grace. You're not clapping for that. Grace on our lives. When the presence of God is on our lives, his grace is sufficient for us. Put it there. And the last, what his presence would do for you is that he said, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. His presence will separate or distinguish us from the unbelievers. What will kill people in Ramses will not touch anybody in Goshen because his presence will keep us and preserve us. This year you shall be preserved because of the presence of God. You are not clapping for that good news. Wow. Go to about 50 people who hug them, shake them. And uh, I don't know if you can do me this song. Uh, amen. I don't know if you can do it for me. Go to about 50 people, shake them, give them the COVID-19 shake. And just tell them, God bless you oh, for coming. I know your life will never be the same. Oh, Kuraiyan, and Suro, say and Abo, Abo, so.
second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 second kings chapter 7 from the verse numbers 1 downwards then Elisha said hear the word of the Lord thus says the Lord tomorrow about this time a seer of fan flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So all, so an officer on whose hand the king leaned and said the man of God and said, look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could this thing be and he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate of the city. And they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come. Let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses. The noise of a great army so they said to one another look the king of israel has had against us the kings of the hittites and the kings of the egyptians to attack us therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact their tents their horses their donkeys and they fled for their lives and when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid them. And it continued like that. And the story ended by saying that these four leprous men were used by God to turn a whole famine over the land of Samaria around and the famine was taken out of the land and they became so blessed that the siege was broken or ended because four sick people four leprous men decided to take the bull by the horn and to change the situation when you go down the bible says that the man whose hands the king leaned who despised the prophecy when the prophecy came and said that if god should rain down um, 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 whatever from heaven within 24 hours can this thing be? The Bible said when the miracle happened and the prophecy came to pass, he was run to go and catch some of the food. When people just ran over him, and the Bible said he died as a result of that. But tonight I want to speak briefly on a subject I've titled "Why Sit We Here Until." we die now before we continue i would like you to wave at somebody and tell the person it is time for aggressive progress i didn't say wave at me i'm telling you to do it so just look at somebody and tell the person okay okay you can do it this way too it is time for aggressive movement Tell your neighbor, no retreat, no surrender. Come on. We saw from the story in the chapter 7, the verses 5 and 6. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, 
to their surprise no one was there for the lord had caused the army of the syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses the noise of a great army so god made the syrian army hear the noise of a great army that tells me that this army that the syrian army had their noise were not ordinary army in essence god has an army you're not clapping at all so when joshua and his cohorts were going to fight against the people of jericho and they were contemplating who to be their leader in joshua the chapter 5 verse 14 so a certain being appeared joshua 5 14 and the being said but no as commander of the army of the lord i have now come so heaven has an army and the army has a commander So 2 Kings 6, 16 and 17, 2 Kings 6, 16 and 17, follow me closely, I'm building a premise. So he answered, do not fear, and this was uh, the discourse between Elisha and his servant Gehazi, when Gehazi woke up one morning and went peeped through the window and realized that the house was encompassed run about with some soldiers from Syria. The Bible said the young man ran to his boss and said that we are surrounded by um, the armies of Syria. And the old man looked at him and said, what's your problem? Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So you read the verse 16 and 17. So he answered, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open the eyes of my servant that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here physically but in the spirit there is an army that has surrounded this whole place. In your house, there is a supernatural army that has surrounded your house. As you step out of here, morning, afternoon, day, night, dawn, there is an army that has encompassed you run about. I want you to understand that God has an army and every now and then as a child of God, this army protects you to ensure that no weapon against you prospers. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, it is being condemned. In Isaiah 49 verse 25, the Bible says, but thou says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will continue with him who content with my children and I will I will save your children when God said he will contend with them that contend with us he was not saying that he is going to fight physically he is too big in that class to fight that petty demons in your village what he's saying is that he has an army that when he instruct them to go fight on your behalf they will step out there and do war on your behalf and so in Exodus 14 14 when Israel had confronted the Red Sea and God told Moses to strike the rod on the Red Sea and divide the Red Sea heta teeter. God went further to tell Moses that Moses I will fight for you and you shall hold your peace what God was saying was that I have an army that can fight for my children and they will hold their peace that's why when Jesus was arrested and somebody cut the ears of Malchus one of the servants of the high priest Jesus said this is not a physical battle if it is a physical battle I have in my ability to command the angels of heaven to come and fight on my behalf I'm here to announce to you heaven has an army that's why if they took you to a shrine the heavens army can interrupt and make sure that their works are overruled and overturned this year I don't know who has risen against you the armies of the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace if you believe me stand up clap and scream yes so one day in Joshua 10 11 Israel was fighting 
a certain king called Adoni Bezek. God became so furious, he was like, I will teach these people a lesson they will never forget. So in the chapter 10, the verse 11 of Joshua, and it happened as they fled from Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down large stones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. Some people were fighting Israel, and God said, why do you fight my people? And God owned the battle. And so the Bible said God started throwing stones. I don't think it was God. I think he instructed the armies of heaven. And they started throwing stones. You'll be walking out, then bam, a big hailstone will hit your head and you just smash. And then you fall down. And it happened and the Bible said they all died. And so I realized that the heavens army, they are so dangerous in warfare with their supernatural sophisticated weaponry that when they decide to contend with you, if you rise against God's people, they can throw stones, they can release fire, they can release brimstones, horrible tempests, they can do all kinds of things. But this year, God said, I should tell you, his enemies, your enemies are going to be fought against by the armies of the Lord. If you believe in clap and shout, yes. So God has an army and when the four lepers moved into the camp of the Syrians the Bible said and they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp so the, the, to their surprise no one was there for the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses the noise of a great army so they said to one another look the king of israel had hired against us the kings of Ta of the hittites the kings of the egyptians to attack us these meanwhile these were only four lepers coming but god amplified their steps that their steps was as if a whole army hired other armies come together as allied forces and were coming against the Syrian army. Meanwhile, it was just four leprous men coming. Let me just say this, that this year, God will so much amplify your steps that the little steps you will take, God will give you acceleration on every side. See, I don't know, you haven't been to a point in life where sometimes you don't have money and somebody comes to ask you, can you please loan me 1,000 Ghana, 2,000 Ghana? And you ask yourself, what did these people say about me? God has amplified your steps. You, you are not clapping for that one. But you see, tell your neighbor, never despise prophecies. I'm, I'm not hearing you. Tell your neighbor, never despise prophecies. 1 Thessalonians 5.20 Do not despise prophecies. Gradually, we're in a country where everybody despises prophecies to a point where people take for granted men of God and people who prophesy and use this, thou serve the Lord. It is true, all kinds of illicit things are happening in our world today and people have done all kinds of mayhem to the prophetic ministry. But I always tell you that, that we have the counterfeit dollars that does not stop us from spending the good dollars. Certainly, there are prophets ordained authenticated, reputed by God. You are not saying amen. So the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 believe in the prophets and you prosper. For God to have said that meant that he knew that one day the world will go so much bad that people will not believe in the prophetic anymore and all kinds of nasty things will happen in the world where it will be difficult for people to believe in prophets. So God at all time publicly declared that believe in the prophets that you may prosper believe in his believe in the lord and you'll be established for god to say that means that there will be the probability and the tendency of you disbelieving in prophet but god says you must believe in the prophets why because your prosperity as a child
child of God is connected to a prophetic voice over your life. Amos 3, the verse number 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing except he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Hosea chapter 12, the verse number 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet, Israel was preserved. And so all these scriptures are to let you know that God is not against the prophetic ministry. When you read in the New Covenant, the Bible says that these are established in the church. The apostles and the prophets. Miracles, healings, and so all these are part of the prophetic and God expects us not to despise the prophetic. If a man of God under the anointing, heavenly repute and looks at you and tells you that thou share the law, tomorrow by this time a barley of farm flour shall be sold for a shaka. Don't disbelieve in his prophecy. Don't sit there and say that if God opened the windows of heaven, can this prophecy come to pass? The Bible says that a certain man whose hands the king leaned in essence he was more or less like the minister of finance. The Bible says he disbelieved in the prophecy but the prophet looked at him and said because you are not believing it, it will happen but you will never be a partaker of the blessing. And 24 hours later the prophecy came to pass this man saw it and wanted to run to go and enjoy the prosperity that was coming and the Bible says people ran over him and he died. If you despise a prophecy, Ghanaians, you can lose your life. So I came to encourage this country that we need not to be the kind of country that hates prophecies and abhors prophets. Yes, we are saying we should not prophesy for fear and panic to come into the land. But if God reveals to me that Bogosu will have a crash, then I will open my mouth and say it because if I don't say it for people to pray, something can happen that can cause our children and our mothers and our sisters to die prematurely. I declare over this nation, once again let the prophetic fall so that the rings of prophecy will be seen in the streets of the nation. If you believe it, clap, stand up and scream yes! There was a consistent battle between Israel and Syria. In 1 Kings 20, 1 to 6, you will see the originator of this consistent battle. So let's read it. 1 Kings 20, 1 to 6. Am I helping you? Now ben the king of Syria, gathered all his forces together. 32 kings were with him with horses and chariots and he went up and besieged Samaria he started the fight he went to attack Samaria ben Hadad, the king of Syria Israel was in their own corner they've never come across the part of the Syrians but ben Hadad, the king of Syria one day rose up and attacked Samaria it isn't so bad sometimes you are in your house and someone just crosses your path like that for being a child of God for no apparent cause sometimes people just want to come against your stuff and made war against it. Then he sent messengers into the city to Ahab, king of Israel, and said to him, Thou said, Ben Hadad, your silver and your gold are mine. Can you imagine? Your loveliest wives and children are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, because you have a sophisticated weaponry and you have power, just as you say, I and all that. I have are yours. We will give you our wives. We will give you gold. We will give you everything. We will come and take our wives. Take everything. Because Israel didn't want problem. Then the messengers came back again. Satan is so wicked that if you negotiate with him, he will always come back. That's why I don't give people a chance to think they can. What's the word? Um, blackmail. I hate blackmail. Blackmailers now some people can even blackmail you emotionally. Blackmailers, if you go by their terms, will always come back. So it is always good to fight them head on right there and then. And make sure you settle, make sure you break them right there. Anybody with any traces and tendencies of blackmail around you, I chase the person out of your life. Because blackmailers are witches and wizards. 
clapping at all. Because Israel succumbed to what the Syrians wanted from them. The Bible said they came back and said, Thou said Ben Hadad, indeed, I've sent you saying, You shall deliver to me your gold, your wives, and your children. But I will send my servants to you tomorrow about this time again, and they shall set your house and the house of your servants, and it shall be that whatever is pleasant in their eyes, they will put it in their hands and take it. Now, I'm there. I've not come to fight you. I've not invited you for any battle. You just send a delegation one day to me that you want my wives and all the wives of all the people in the country. You want our gold. You want our silver. Because I don't want problem. I said, okay, come and take them. You realize that I want peace. So you wanted to take advantage of my, what do you call it? Um... Uh, my leniency for whatever and then you come again and say this time we are not coming for your wives we are not coming for your gold and your silver this time round what we want to do is that we are going to make sure we come to every house we have a set warrant we will come to every house of the Israelites and we are making sure anything we see if it's a Rolex watch if it's a Mercedes Benz if it is a whatever we are taking anything when you go down the elders of Israel send the message across and the people of Israel said no this one we won't allow why must we allow people to come into our bedrooms and come and take what they want to take we will revolt and fight I came to announce to somebody in our CC that enough of you allowing some things to go under the carpet on address this year anybody who will come with any threat to come and frustrate you you want to say enough of this rubbish I declare on you that this year you will stand for your rights if you believe it stand up and scream yes the enemy came for your job he came from your ministry he came for your mother he came for your father this time is coming for your health you must say enough is enough i shall not die i will live to declare the works of god i will never allow the devil have a field day around me again if you believe that's a prophecy for you clap and scream like fire And this consistent battle continued to a point where it gravitated into something so bad that now the people of Syria every minute would want to come and attack Israel. And here in 2 Kings, the chapter number 6 and 7, they had come again to attack Israel. It had become so great a battle that now all the airports and all the sensitive places of Israel had been captured by the Syrians. So now Israel had become totally impoverished. And Israel wouldn't have food, wouldn't have water access to all these amenities. Everything was blocked by the Syrians. That was the time where the Bible said that now Israel had to eat ass head, dove's dung. And two women went to the king to tell the king that what we agreed to do because of the anger was that one brought the child, we ate the child. The next day, she must bring a child, but she's playing wise and doesn't want to bring the child. So the hunger had become so intense that now Israel was eating dove's dung. The dung, the droppings of a dove. They were eating the feces of a dove. They were eating ass head. The animal ass or donkey was a forbidden donkey for the Israelites to eat. But because of the pressure, Israel was eating forbidden animals. To make matters worse, Israel now was practicing cannibalism. They were eating human flesh. That's how bad the situation had been. Ghanaians, let me say that yes, there is famine, but it has not become that bad where we are eating our children. That tells us that if Israel came out of this then God is able to change your story and bring blessings into this country if you believe a clap and scream a big amen they started eating human flesh then I remember from Leviticus 26 29 Leviticus 26 29 
that Moses before his demise told Israel explicitly that if you go berserk or begin to do things contravening God's decrees or you run against God's ordinances these are some of the consequences that you will have he told them you shall eat the flesh of your sons and you shall eat the flesh of your daughters so because Israel went apostasy and started serving other gods Syria overpowered them the hunger became so great to a point where they started fulfilling this prophecy Moses told them about some about 400 years prior to the pain they were going through now what I say is that be very careful not to step out of the will of God otherwise there could be famine in your pocket then in the midst of all this the king of Israel the capital then Samaria called the Scots and sat down with them and told them that this impending hunger and famine is serious are there no prophets in town then they told him that Elisha is in town and then he said then go arrest him and just bring him over if he says he won't come take his life because we can't have prophets in the land and they can't prophesy Israel was totally opposite Ghana Ghana would say don't prophesy Israel would say we need them prophets to prophesy and when Elisha heard that the king has sent a delegation to come and arrest him for not prophesying Elisha opened his mouth and declared thou serve the Lord tomorrow by this time a valley of fan flash shall be sold for a shaker I stand as your Elisha and I declare over you that within 24 hours something will happen in your marriage something will happen in your ministry something will happen in your finance something will happen in your health something will happen in your church if you believe in the God of prophecy stand up clap and shout yes I see see I can't hear you I said shout yes can I prophesy I prophesy on you that within 24 hours every expectation of your heart shall never be cut off within 24 hours goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of God forever within 24 hours every closed door shall open every miracle expected shall be granted you if God did it in the days of Elisha then he has not changed he's the same yesterday today and forever I prophesy that within 24 hours poverty shall be broken and prosperity shall be released if you believe in club and scream yeah 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 lift your hands and say oh Lord clear on my life that within 24 hours let a new chapter happen in my life let a new breakthrough come let a miracle happen to me so within 24 hours let poverty break on my life can you lift your hands clap and begin to pray for the 24 hour miracle declare it on your life declare it on your ministry declare it on your finance declare it on your ministry You are not clapping at all. Tell your neighbor I see you with your 24 hour miracle. Sit down, let me preach the word. Joseph, within 24 hours, a prisoner had become a prime minister. That tells me that all things are possible to them that believe. If within 24 hours, a prisoner, now here in Ghana, hear me. You cannot come from Insawum and then become the, pre the president of the country within 24 hours. But God did it for Joshua um, um, and Joseph to let you know that the impossible shall become possible this year. And it all can come from the mouth of a prophet. So I stand by the prophetic anointing and I declare that this year the overtakers anointing will come on you. What will take people months? It will take you hours. 
what will take people weeks it will take you microseconds if you believe in stand up and shout yes sit down when the prophet elisha gave the prophecy people in the palace who had access to certain amenities because you are in the palace even in the family you will not feel it because i mean everything is at the beck and call in the palace and they had accesses of using zeros adding zeros to figures over invoice and under invoice and all those things did not believe in the prophecy when people are okay and they are comfortable in life they don't believe in spiritual things see no, that's why no matter how far God has brought you and which doors God has opened for you. Don't be so arrogant that you think that we do. They're not clapping for that. They were in the comfort of their homes assessing the prophecy as to whether if God even opens the windows of heaven, can this prophecy come to pass? And whilst these people were brought on top of their voices and they were trying to ascertain whether the prophecy could come to a fruition or not some non-entities some nobodies some rejected and dejected and annihilated people from the society see that's why i love to preach to people who know there is no hope and all their hope is in god if you are preaching to people who think that charlie we have a job we have a car we have a house we have prestige in the society sometimes it is difficult for them to open up to receive when people know that there is no hope except in God and their help is in the name of the Lord when they even sit in church and they want to, what preaching is going on cause them to deviate from the full cause they tell you, excuse me, I have an appointment with God I got, I got, I got issues to settle when they come to church they didn't join functions and join groups and try to be in people's case and try to criticize people and try to castigate at people they don't envy people, they don't fight people they don't have issues with people when they come to church worship time they lift their hands and they worship with all their heart because they don't have one city in their pocket they know that if god does not speak they will be as doomed as whatever and so all their hope is in jesus when they come to church look into jesus the altar and the finisher of their faith before church service they hang on their clothes they know that if i miss this service i may miss something of a lifetime people who are okay they come as and when they want because after all they have a job that pays them the money. they have a good car they have some one or two links here good family so sometimes something doesn't bother them they have a boyfriend who can sign a check for them so they don't care about madam all these things can crash one day can crash overnight that is why in all your getting get god it's a fool who say there is no god this man was in the palace and he was doubting the prophecy and once he was doubting four lepers were sitting at the gate of the city somebody was walking past them when they were eavesdropping heard that a prophet called elisha had prophesied that tomorrow by this time a valley of fan flash shall be so for a shaka, and the famine shall see the bible said they instantly took advantage of the prophecy ladies and gentlemen if you see an anointing take advantage of it who is here taking advantage of the anointing tonight receive your miracle i said receive your blessing receive your breakthroughs receive your breakthroughs stand up and say i can and i Say receive you can't when he says shall you shall don't be in church and you have some baby pasta be in church clap you won't clap shout you won't shout because you think you are okay now come on lift your hands and clap and shout I see see I'm not hearing you I want you to clap your hands over your land and give the Lord a Why 
sit you here until we die. People living in the city are struggling. Those are the gate of the city there. You see, and in those days, if you were a leper, you were meant to stay outside of the city. So you were at the gate of the city wearing a cloak that identifies you as a leper. And every now and then you have to be screaming, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, to let everybody know that nobody comes close to you because they felt that it was so infectious that should somebody come to you, the person couldn't be infected by it. And so that the stigma and the scandal, scandal that goes with leprosy. And so these men had been put in isolation and nobody would have to come close to them. And so somebody passing probably opened the mouth and said it and they had it. And they said, why sit we here until we die? After all, we are more than dead people. Don't joke with people who don't fear death. So they said, after all, let's just move to the camp of the Syrians. Who knows? If we go and they get us alive, they get us alive. If they kill us, they kill us. After all, we are here dying. So if we go and we are able to make some indelible mark, everybody will say that we tried something and we died. Sister, don't sit down and die. It is time to step out. Good news. When they step out, four leprous men, the Bible said the Syrians had the noise of chariots and horses. Four people coming and God amplified their steps. And their steps now were sounding in the ears of the enemy like chariots and horses. Check up, check up, check up, check up, check up. I realized that if you move, heaven will move. If you take a step, heaven will take a step. If you start the business, heaven will start with you. The reason why it has not happened is because you are sitting on your blessing. This year you want to take, I'm stepping forward. And as you step forward, heaven will step there with you. Can you clap and scream, yes? And the Bible said, when they went to the camp of the Syrians, the Syrians had fled, leaving their horses and their chariots behind. Thinking they would run faster on foot than their chariots. If God is with you, the little step you take, God puts your fear on your enemies. Oh, you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are not, not getting this. And that day, the Bible said the four leprous men went and found gold. This year, if you step out, you'll find gold. You're not clapping at all. Hey, money is waiting for you at the other side you just have to cross over you are sitting in poverty because you have not moved if you can begin to step out with a business idea with a business plan with your cv with an idea to do something i'm telling you money will meet you i pray that this is you meet your goal and you meet your silver the bible said in the farm food i see the famine ending you will no more be poor and the bible said the enemies that are cooked and the four lepers wore the cloaks. This year, God will bless you. You'll be wearing the iron as well. Can you clap and shout? Yes. Even your clothes will change. No, no, you are not clapping. You are not clapping. You are. You can go back. Come on. But when seven eight, they can say, if this is your prophecy. Four things the lepers did that I want everybody in RCC to do. Number one, despite the condition they were in, that I brought them in isolation because I'm like, how could they be isolated and still hear what was happening in town? Which means that they managed to eavesdrop. And so they had some good news. The first thing you must do in your predicament, in your famine, in your frustration, is to open yourself up for information. Your information determines the reformation you get in your life. You are who you are today because of what you had yesterday. 
And so what are you hearing? What are you listening to? Whom are you listening to? Who is teaching you? Who is educating you? Who is talking what to you? Very important. And so I always tell people that you must be excited. You are in a church like this where we don't just come and dance and go, but we feed you with insight and knowledge and information and revelations because these are things that can help you run fast in life. And you need them. Now, give me Mark chapter 4 and the verse number 24. Am I doing good? Mark 4, 24. Quickly. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. MCR. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed what you hear. That word there is translated, Consider carefully what you hear. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. But it says, Take heed what you hear. Be careful of the things you hear. Which means that, See, the words that enters your ears which means that you don't just pick a call and listen to what that person is saying on the other side of the phone you must decipher what to listen to it's your ears and it's your phone be careful what you hear if somebody comes to tell you things that cannot add up and cannot help you advance and things that cannot spare you on and motivate you and things that will cripple your feet and balance your commitment and affect your love for your pastor you close your ears and say excuse me i can't listen to this rubbish i must be careful what i hear move down go to luke 8 28 the first one says be careful what you hear luke 8 28 when he saw Jesus, he cried out. No, look eight. Let me see. Look eight eighteen. Look eight eighteen. Look eight eighteen. Therefore, take heed how. The first one is what you hear. The second one is how you hear it. Oh, Bishop, Bishop, a sister called me and said something about the church. Keep quiet. How did you hear it? You. How did you hear it? How can, of all the about 1,000 members we have, the sister was able to call only you? How did you, how you, how did you hear it? Not to say, who could, how I would hear? Who can say, I want to know what it is. I normally bless people who come to tell me they heard than the people who said. I'm, 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 I'm appreciating somebody. Because what you hear, you see, you can hear just one word, and that word can cripple you for a whole year. That's why you have to be careful the things you hear. These lepers decided to hear some good news. I believe people were saying all kinds of things about the prophecy, including um, the minister of finance who was saying it can't be possible. But these cripples, um, these lepers made a decision, even if it was from a bad source or whatever, I want to take advantage of what we heard. Just like, listen to things. Because Romans 10, 17, Romans 10, 17, Romans 10, 17, quickly, Romans 10, 17, Romans 10, so then faith uh -huh, comes, so faith has legs, and he will come, but he will come to those who hear some good news, in the same way doubt will also come when you hear bad news, and so if you don't want to hear bad news and have doubt, against God and against your church and against your pastor and against the anointing and the miracle God wants to do to you then let faith come and faith comes by you hearing and hearing the word of God that's why you must come to church and hear the word of God because as you keep hearing faith your faith comes alive and I know tonight somebody's faith has come alive and you're about to roll your sleeves and take some steps and make a decision this year come hell high waters I will make an indelible back in my generation can you clap and scream? Yes. They heard. What are you hearing? One day I told one sister, that, do, do you listen to my preachings? 
because she was taking some decision. I was like, don't do it. She disobeyed and went, did it her own way, and then the consequences. She came back crying. And I said, sweetie, I'll tap your back as a father and just have embrace you. But what do you question? I make a camera drink of me. We are not my jewels. We're blasting fine. Daddy, daddy, so this time that you have to tell me something, and you are blessing me. I'm so good. This day, your castles went here. Then I asked her, Did you listen to my preaching at all? Because if you listen to my preaching, you won't do these mistakes. You won't. There are a lot of you sitting here. If you should listen to the messages, and I'm going to come on crow. As some of you may say, so I want now, but no. Say, hello. It's true. Because as you see a change, financial, as you see a change in your health, as you see a change, your level, you got the things you are studying. These people had just one prophecy. Who? <laughs> you are not clapping at all. Am I preaching? Tell somebody what you hear, act upon it, act upon it. Number two. Number two. They came together. The law of unity. The law of synergy. The Bible said, they said, why sit we? Not why sit I? Why sit we here until we die? We have to move. Madam, get a partner who agrees with you and advance. One chases thousand to put ten thousand to fly. Stop being myself, myself. It's only me. Get somebody who can agree with you. Connect and come out with an idea and come out with a business and just look into somebody's business that is doing well. Invest into it. Get a partner. Connect. Find a way. Just make sure you connect. See that you have agreed to come out with um, a company or something. We need your blessing. Hallelujah. Yes, it has to be legal. Everything has to be on paper. I mean, with lawyers and everything, because I'm on for a bad. So, oh, come on, clap, 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 clap. clap. Unity. Together we stand divided before. Find a partner. It's not for you to look for gossip partners, look for prayer partners. They came together. It's so sad that when you see three, four, five people coming together in Ghana, you see Nigerians come together, it's a business plan. When you see Ghanaians together, they are going to pull somebody down. What, what spirit is this? I know you won't clap for me, but hey, I'm also a Ghanaian, so I'm telling the truth. It is time to look for connections. And I pray that God will connect you with good people. I pray that supernatural connections, God will bring around you people who will help you to advance. Anybody around your life who is not helping you will take the person out of your life. And I prophesy that the right people will come close. Can you clap and shout? Yes. still needed some women who out of their substance supported his ministry. Jesus, though the son of God, needed the Magi to come from the east with gold, with May and Frank Inson. Everybody needs somebody to connect with. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why if an enemy wants to attack a church, he raises people in the church to attack the financiers of the church to get them out of the church. He won't attack the anointing because the anointing, the devil knows he can't attack it. But he'll raise people even amongst the church to attack people who support financially i pray that anybody around you who is assigned by hell to destroy good people from coming into your life i get the person out your 
clapping is not strong. Divine connections. Number three, they took risk. The four lepers took risk. That was where that old statement from our president, Nana Kufadu, said, All die, we die. It was from that scripture. Why sit we here until we die? If we go to the camp of the enemy, they kill us. If we stay here, we die. All die, yeah. we die. Yeah. And that statement was a statement of risk. Are you in the house? They were, and, and, and let me say this. You don't joke with the Syrian army. They had the sophisticated weaponry. If they said they were going to kill you, it is just one second. For Israel to be afraid of them meant that they were a dangerous super force. And four lepers said we are going there to help with them. But they asked them, or more today, all die, we die. And they started going. Risk. This year we're ready to take some serious risks. Of course, with conscience. But take some risks. I tell people all the time that in this life, refusing to risk itself is a risk. Let me give you a scenario. I'm standing here. Uh, Someone come here. Let's assume you are a snake. Eh? I turn and I see this python. Then someone come here. Let's assume you are a lion. Come here. From here, you are coming. And I want to move here. There is a lion in front of me. Pastor, stand here. Let's assume you are my family witch. I move here. The man is like, hey. So, of you come here. Let's assume you are the devil himself. Only for today, God forbid. Amen. And I'm caught between. Moving backward is danger. Moving sideways is danger. Moving this year, oh, I don't want to even try it. Then there's a line in front of me. Refusing to risk itself is a risk because they are all coming for me. So I must, with the spell of the moment, take a decision. Madam, you have to act too. Sit we here until we die. And they took a decision to advance. Just like Israel before the Red Sea. God said, Step into the waters. Where? He said, Into the waters. God would wish you to take some strong steps this year. Instead of you to chop the money, put the money in the bank, it is better to invest it. Don't be afraid that when you invest and you fail, you have started something that when you even fail, you have gained experience not to make the first mistake you did. Let me tell you something. No bank keeps your money. If you go to the bank right now, that you, that's why when there is an issue in the nation about the bank, and everybody runs there, the bank doesn't have money for them because all your money is working. As soon as you put your money there, they give your money to somebody to work with it. There is no money. That, that facility is sitting there like a building. There is no money there. Don't have that mistake. So why do you give somebody your money to invest for you? You can invest it yourself. Did you get what I said? Start something now. Get a side hustle. Aside your normal job. Start something, start something, start something. I, I, I love when I see people working with the corporate institution and they have side hustles like, um, um, like Mr. Asian, you know, and I, I get, I, that's why I want to give them more job because it's, 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 it makes me like, man, these are the guys. Because the next world we are in and we are going to enter, it's no more about people who have degrees. Check, those with degrees are not the people controlling our world today. It's school dropouts. Education is good. 
I encourage everybody because I see myself, but I'm saying that sister, go out of the box. is making a decision i'm going to get into real estate and the only estate that is real is real estate as a young man here making this i'm going to get into real estate i'm going to cash every money i have and buy a piece of land if it's two plots and start building i'm going to just take half of the plot and just build just one two bedroom apartment on it I will not complete because I don't have that money to complete. And get just a little loan of 20% to just take off. When I get to a certain level, to the lending level, I will go and look for other people's money, OPM, and make sure that they will come and rent the house and I will use their money to complete the building, put them in, take the money they will give to me and start another project. And within five years, I speak grace on somebody that you will take some risks and the Holy Ghost will walk you through. I declare this on you. Lift your head and scream, yes. Let me finish. He took a risk. Is that number four? Huh? And the last one is that they moved. Oh, God bless you. They moved. They moved. It should not be just talking. I'll build a house. I'll build a company. I'll be a multi-billionaire. And when they're here this year, they say, I'm surprised. What is that? much? I'm surprised. 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 I'm Life is not a race. Life is not a race. Life is, no, no, madam. People are buying cars, building houses. Life is not a race. Life is not a race. He made all things before in his time. Daddy kind of want it. No, no, madam. You have to move. This is the year for aggressive movement. I'm expecting every RCC member by December this year to rush to church shouting, Bishop, God has been faithful. If all lepers were able to change their world, you are better than a leper. You have a Holy Ghost. You are born again. You have a pastor like me that preaches to you every Sunday. You can't fail. Stand to your feet and clap for Jesus. Oh, sister. Yeah, baby.
Celebrate grace in the house, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. we give you the glory. Somebody lift your hands and give you the praise to him tonight. I see some lepers stepping out. They are coming out of isolation. devil after anything that belongs to me father let that Syrian cut fire I'm not saying amen at all let you say my father my maker as I clap and I pray I attack any Syrian after my life in 2022 come on clap and lift that fire Ha <laughs> ha 
joint you. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, under this anointing, under this anointing, any Syria, any Syria, I sign from hell, I sign from hell against my life this I year. My life say, this catch year. fire, catch fire. Come on, do it, my say, catch fire, catch fire, say, catch fire, catch fire. Ha. Second topic. The lepers came out of isolation. They broke the camp and they stepped out to fulfill an assignment. I don't think when they changed the national story, they were sent to isolation again. I believe they were sent to the palace. Madam, you can do something that can let your past be forgotten. Yes, Lord. Today you are going to walk and pray. Father, every limitation put on me by whoever, but by the prophetic word, I break and I step out yes. and I accept my blessing and my money. Yes, Are you Lord. here? Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Every limitation, Every limitation put on me. Put on me. I lift up the limits. I lift up the limits. Can you clap, step out and begin to pray? On himself and he said i'm looking like a king i'm looking like a king i'm looking like a king this year will be your year lift your hands up say i receive answers to all my needs say father supply all my needs father supply all this year i receive my houses this year i receive, I receive my, house. my cars i receive my, I receive my clothes i receive my, I receive my openings i receive my I receive contracts i receive, I receive visions I receive I receive breakthroughs. Oh! 
your two hands up. Shout Jesus three times. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hold your hands up. Oh, hallelujah. The lepers are changing their stories. I don't know who stigmatized you and scandalized you and said what over you. I don't know who put you in an isolation and who put which limitation on you. Tonight is that night. Where are you asking yourself these questions? Why sit here until I die? It is time for aggressive movements. And that procrastination will not take you anywhere. As you see, you have to make if it's even 20 years from now, you make it. So why don't you make it now and step out and make a mark? Why are you delaying? You know you can do more than what you're doing. Why are you lazy? Why? Why are you so lazy? You know that you can do two, three, four, five times at the same time. decide to start your home cell thing and that will be it. Four pastors can decide to move this church to another level. Bishop Bookman will not have to even think about RCC Accra, whether people will come or not when he travels. It's all a decision that some people have to make and go outside the box and step out. is talking to us. Just four people can change the choir. Only four people can change the prayer team. Just four people. You are not even a leper. Only four people. Four protocol members can decide to change the face of the ushering and the protocol and the people who come to church. Just, just we need only four. When I was preparing, God said to me, you are four good people away from your miracle. You just need a Mark, a Matthew, a Luke, and a John. And after 2,000 years of your death, the world will still be talking about you. You only need a Shadrach, a Meshach, and an Abednego, and a Daniel. And if you have even made an animal, they will pray you back into the palace. Four people. I see, we can make it. It's incumbent on us to make a decision. the spirit of the Lord move over the church those watching me online let the spirit of God move on you that you listen to the voice of the spirit in this message that you not just be shouting and clapping but as this man is walking past your place of isolation and he's talking and you eavesdropped and heard me say that Elijah is saying 24 hours from now the body of found flesh and so for a shackle you took advantage of the message sometimes I finish preaching I'm like did they really hear the message people should take advantage of the messages and run it's a time to run with the message that he might run he who reads it that's the essence of our preaching I will not mention anybody's name. All your names are in the message I gave. God is calling us to a new level of serious and aggressive commitment and progress. You can't continue to be like this. There must be a change. You must prosper. You must succeed. You must make it. You must break through. Who are controlling nations are no more that you don't have six fingers. You can be a blessing in your generation. I 
can lift your hands up an idea will drop into your spirit the vision will come clear into your spirit the presence of God will come upon you oh prophecy was in the message and I know you got it go and run with the prophetic preaching and your life will never be the same I hope you are not angry with me I know you've gotten it hallelujah Yeah, but sweet, I want to lay hands on you come here let me pray for you said to me that is a family tree and as soon as they go put you there it means your time to die is due and every year that tree claims the blood of one person and this year they are saying you are the next in line but the Lord said I should just make a decree that it will not happen their expectations will not hold because not your blood for no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise against your life shall be condemned. Break! For death could not hold him captive. For even in the grave he is Lord. hold him captive even in the grave he is Lord Mami what can I show you? you came to change okay. your life is spent because God loves you Nothing will happen to you. That avenger of blood and in the house is broken. Oh, you're not clapping. Uh -huh. Church, you're not clapping for that. Uh -huh. Who is Philip? Who is Philip? Father life, where is he? He's at Kumasi. Kumasi. What's his name? Felix. Dede. Your father is Felix. Yes, and you are Felix. Ah. Oh, what? 
Look at you. You are not. But whoever puts you in this isolation, you will escape it. And you will see victory on every side. In the same way, church, stretch your hands on our brother. And we're going to speak blessings on him. And declare that the curse pronounced on him is revoked. Yes, Lord. And in the stead of the curse, blessings will be released on him from yes, tonight. Lord. Open your mouth and speak over him. Come on, church. <laughs> So I lay hands on you, whoever the person is. They can tamper with your womb. Kali abeli katuga. Something will break right now. Break. In the name of Jesus, and let the anointing flow through her. Man, in the God is doing a surgery on her. Mama, I just saw you now, Mama. Once I'm here, two years from us, Mama. Sandra, 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 Sandra. Sandra, Sandra, on him. On him, on him. Amen. Friend, catch us, Papa, so on him. Now, friends, I'm two years from us, Mama, this is here. Look at you. Are you clapping or are you doing something like clapping? Huh? How are you? How are you? How are you? Stretch your hands on mama. We want to cover her and the child. Mantola Shababa Kutala Bahaya. Mantola Men of Grace. Kala Bahaya. Lay hands. for you. So I feel.
every night before I go to bed, I spend almost one hour praying for. But I do my prayers for my members in the night when they are sleeping. I speak over them. And twice I was praying for you and your wife. And I saw that Okuta White Ankechit now she was dancing in front here. And she was giving a testimony. Bishop, I've gotten a contract. That has settled every problem that I have in the area of finance. Twice. Then God said to me, tell her whenever you see her, she should get ready this year. A contract that will blow her mind. That contract and I'm going to be sitting down in the rear dino. Yes, Lord. Malala kata kata. Touch. I touch you with strip. Where are you? Even in the grave, somebody scream. Yes. Jesus, you can never step out of the isolation without connecting with Jesus. They connected with themselves, the lepers, but in this case, you want to connect with Jesus, and He'll give you acceleration and speed in your life. Very simple with our heart, we believe on righteousness, but with our mouth, confession is made on salvation. You want to speak this as your prayer be. As I say them, you say after me, say, Jesus. I believe you are the son of God. You came to die for my sins. On the third day, you resurrected from the grave. You are alive forever. I therefore invite you into my heart. Come change me and I will save you the rest of my days. I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray and pray, you are born again. Very simple. Your name is written in the book of life. If Christ happens to appear today, you go with us. But between now until the day it comes, you have to find yourself a word based church like RCC and join the church and serve God faithfully there. If you're in Accra, I personally invite you to join us. And I know your life will never be the same. Every Sunday, 8 in the morning. Every Tuesday, 10 in the morning. Every Friday, 6 30 p.m. in the evening. God bless you. We're going to take what we call our risky seeds. The seeds of risk. We are sowing the seed. Skinny hope, but ye Jesus Kanakasa God, we are sowing the seed. Trusting you for openings in the area of finances. And I know that as you step out like these lepers, will this your seed? The God who opened the door for these lepers will open some doors for you. The woman no on the screen. Consider sowing a seed to say, Bishop, I put this on the altar. I'm trusting God for openings in the area of finances. And watch God. He's faithful to make sure that when you give to Him, it will be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run over. He will cause men to give it back to you. And those of you in the auditorium, this is a prophetic seed. This is not your offering. You are, you are doing a prophetic seed. So pick a seed. Pick a seed. Why sit? On my money until I die. I want to sow and prove God and try God and trust God. 
Say, test and see that the Lord is good. So take your seat. Lift it up. Father, we bless every seed. <coughs> we sanctify them. As we give, may it be given back to us. In Jesus' mighty name, according to your word. Amen. All right. Do me a song. <coughs> 